Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today we are in the 3D room again. Uh, and I say again because I originally started to film this unboxing of this very large 3D printer. Uh, look for that video. And I realized the table's stable, but a little rickety. So once this gets start slinging back and forth, this is gonna rock, I don't want that. So I purchased this Simpson Strong Tie bench kit. It's made for making a workbench, but with a back and all, but I don't need the back. And it comes with these brackets. So it's supposed to be real simple. I've pre-cut the wood already, so now we're just gonna assemble this. And I'm just making a base for this tabletop so we can slide under here and actually make it nice and stable. It's also gonna have a shelf down here so I can actually, uh, whereas this one has no storage, now I'll be able to have some storage for stuff under here because space is at a premium around here. So, let's get building. I wanted to show you a little more about this kit I have. It's really cool. I could have just butt ended up to make it a little bit easier because I could pre-cut everything and just screw it all together. And as you can see here, I'm not going to use the backboard, but I am going to use the bench part. And this particular kit comes with everything you need, uh, the brackets and the screws. So all you need to do is just cut it down to size and you're ready to go. I have all the wood laid out and I have a driver here, Ryobi, since this is a Makita free area. So we'll be using this to assemble everything. And like I said, it includes a set of screws for you to use. I took a small break to get some screws, which are actually a Torx head. Uh, they're the same build as the ones that come with it, but for some reason my Phillips head on this seems to be uh, stripping out the head of the screw so it's not going all the way in. So I'm gonna switch this to give it a little bit of a better bite. What's nice about these screws is they come with their own Torx bit. All the long stretchers now have a bracket. All that's left now is to take these short ones, put them in there. So once all the top members are in, you go ahead and put the bottom struts and rails in and that'll later on be a shelf that I can put a piece of wood on. So I'm just going to attach those brackets the same way I did the top ones. So like I said, here it is all set up and it's a little wobbly and I was surprised about that. I expected some but not like this. So I went and I got a level and believe it or not, it's it's right on. Um, I think there must be a bulge in the floor. So I'm gonna go ahead now, like I said before, we're gonna put this tabletop on here and see how it goes. And if you're wondering how I'm doing that without taking the 3D printer off, I think I'm gonna take one end, I'm gonna put it under the table, at the end of the table, unscrew the legs on here, and then just move it on over. All right, let's see if we can dump everything all over the floor. Well, that hurt. Now I gotta go back down again and take out the screws. Although we're not using um, these legs because of the size and weight of this, but if you need to make a real quick table, like I said, that was real quick. This is just from Ikea, or you could use a piece of plywood. But these legs are really nice. You just mount this plate underneath and then the legs screw on so you have a real nice instant table from any piece of flat wood 
or door. Lewin doors are always good. Solid core doors too. And here's something that I don't know if you can see it, but this is actually bowed down in the middle because uh, there was no middle support on those legs. So it's another good reason I did this. So now I just need to get some screws to drive this into here. I think I forgot to turn the camera back on. Again, I hate this camera. All right, so I, I'm, at this point, I don't know what I did or didn't film, but here's what we did. I took the legs off of this, but I, well, back up. First thing I did is I edged, you know, the legs were inset, so I edged this table onto the end of the workbench, took the legs off, slid this all the way up as far as I could go, took the two back legs off, and then I lined everything up, and then I took some countersunk uh, construction screws and I drilled the top down onto here. And as you can see, this is a very sturdy now. There's no wobble, there's no wiggle. Uh, like I said, uh, um, this printer is a 500 by 500 by 500. It's a big beast of a printer to print our R2D2 parts with. And I needed something really strong. This is perfect. Um, down here, I'm going to put a shelf, and I think I want to try and find a dehumidifier to put into here uh, for the filament. But I will put a link below to everything I used today, which I used this um, workbench kit from Stanley, was it? Oh, Simpson Strong Tie, I'm sorry. And uh, it made putting it together really easy. Yeah, that's it. So now you can go ahead and watch the other video where I continue to build this and set this up and do some test prints. So I hope this helped him. Um, give it a like if it did. And I'll, uh, I'll see you at the next build. This is Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave for this infrastructure build.